Well, boys and girls, it's been about a year. I can't tell you what the wait's been in the past year to do this video, to do this series, to do all of it. It's been a long and arduous year since the end of FYM. Hasbro picked up Power Rangers and is now planning to end its live-action legacy. The Pony Comics continue with a hypothetical season 10 that we will get to soon. And with Gen 5 a year on the horizon, Ryzen, it looked like there was going to be nothing to satiate us in the gap in between. That is, until a week later, when it was shockingly announced that this series would exist. Since then, reaction, thoughts, and everything else has been either mixed, bad, or otherwise. And for the last year, I have been silent. Well, no more. I am Nirvana Sparkle. Welcome to the next new 26 series. Welcome to Pony Life. Or as we call it here, New 26 for Life. For those that are new to New 26, pun intended, here's how it works. Every week, you will get a review of every My Little Pony Pony Life episode through a scale of 1 to 6. 6 being the highest, 1 being the lowest. Because this show is more focused on comedy, rather than story, characters, and morals, laugh factor will be added into the score. Of course, moral will always take precedent over everything else. This is not a review based on the quality of animation or, or whether things are well written. Comedy is hard. So, judging this series more on its writing quality is really back to that laugh factor quality. Plus, these episodes are only about 12 minutes long and divided into two parts. But I will be reviewing the entire episode as one collective whole. With that said, let's start with episode one. Princess Probs with a Z. Now, one of the negatives about Pony Life going into the series is its world and rules aren't really told to you. They aren't really established or given any say You're given the theme song, which I will say is better than FIM's theme song over the last 10 years. But other than that, you are given zero pretense. You are tossed right in to the brand new Sugar Cube Corner. Everything looks extremely abstract, very abstract, almost like a splash water painting for the background. But once you're there, you're immediately greeted with voices familiar, mainly my beloved Twilight Sparkle, brought back by Tara Strong. In fact, all the old cats is back. Sans one. But we'll get to that in a later edition of For Life. For now, the old cats is back. And Pinky is now running Sugar Cube. 
She is lead potion bartender and concoction maker at Sugar Cube. And she's cooking up some delectable desserts for something called the Royal Jelly Juggernaut, a storyline thread that will go throughout the entire first season of life. The Royal Jelly Juggernaut is essentially your chopped, if you were, your iron chef for dessert makers. It can be brutally, brutally harsh competition, but the sweetest will win, judged by Princess Celestia, once again voiced by Nicole Oliver. If this feels like a reunion of sorts, that's because this episode almost gives off that tone in its first two minutes, mainly by Applejack saying the line, Did you miss this? I miss this. In reference to it's been a year since they last left up I am and we closed the book on it. In fact, you can have the entire series from season 4 on up in reviews through a playlist. Multiple playlists. But back to the episode. Pinky's preparing for the jug. But everything isn't taken as seriously as mainly Twilight would like it. Which is typical Twy and typical Pinky. She's just there for the fun and the walls, while Twy is trying to have her put her best foot forward. And her friends try to aid in this. Many, many times. Twy with a simple hairnet for safety. And the others with, with Flutter's eye kind of just being there. In fact, she's not even in the episode or animated in it. Rainbow Dash is trying to add character and Vanash, some charisma. Rarity is trying to naturally up Pinky, look the part, and... And Applejack is trying to be careful and easy. All their plans kind of backfire when a flan recipe, yes, Flan explodes and they're stuck. They eventually eat their way through in part two, but not before Pinky is at the mercy of the judges. Trying to make multiple recipes. Murphy's Law naturally kicks in and, well, everything is looking horrible. Just when her friends show up, she completes her upside-down flan cakes. Kind of mixed up an earlier idea from Twilight's favorite dessert repertoires, an upside-down pineapple cake and flan. Celestia, in an overly dramatic fashion, likes it and thinks he makes the show cut. The moral of the episode is in trusting that they've that your friends have this handle, which Twilight didn't, of course. A good moral one shows that the moral spirit of FIM still permeates through through this show, although it's a little harder to see, mainly because of the shorter runtime between shorts. And that's one of the biggest problems with Pony Life as a whole. It tries to get off these big moral ideas in bite-sized bit of time. It's more like trying to have uh, mini M&Ms as compared to mini Reese's. It just doesn't pack as much of a 
moral punches all at once. Plus, its tone, because of its quicker speed, will naturally be all over the place. Jokes, lines, references like rarity, having a fainting couch on call, are rather hilarious. And yes, Pinky's got her old school balloon gag from episodes way back in season one when she's overly excited. In fact, every pony, as you'll discover, has a gag like this. And it works to the extent. But the main ad that Princess Probs introduces is the concept of magical potions. They drink them like they're sodas, and these potions have different effects. Mainly, a delivery potion, which, al which allows two ponies to share each other's thoughts on a situation that is used for the opening gag to describe the juggernaut. First from Pinky's perspective, and then from Twice Worrying's perspective. Sure, it's not Twilighting. So, no. The gauge is barely registering a one here. But her worry is understandable, given reality TV and such. Which is another thing. This series takes a more ponies living in our modern world approach. Things like earbuds, reality shows, and eventually down the line, tablets, and plugging into the cloud even, literally, will permeate this show. But for now, Princess Prompts keeps it light, which is kind of the view of the show in general. If you keep an open mind and keep it light, and allow just the interactions between our favorite cast that reconnect you to this brand new concept, there's some fun to be had. Sure, it's not as epic or thrilling or well written as the show that has come before, but unlike the show that it's often compared to, Teen Titans Go, Pony Life feels grounded. Grounded by the moral center of FI, FIM's morals while st still providing a, con a comedic yet sometimes hyper good time. Every character is in point, and the references back to FIM character quirks are pretty nice. Nice. The animation takes a little getting used to, but is overall bearable. For 22-minute episodes, if you add the parts together, it's harmless. And that's just it. This is a harmless slice of pony fun. Nothing will ever be as epic as the last 10 years we spent in FIM proper. This is more of a sit and chill with your friends kind of a TV show. Before the next generation hopefully adds back the epicness and story. For now... I'm just glad to have these characters back in my life once again. Even if it's taken a little bit differently. And even if I have to let quite a few things slide off my hooves, if you will. Princess Probs, the first short of Pony Life, gets a 4 out of 6. Great comedic jokes. Great condensed storyline with an unexpected payoff, and the moral is a good one, especially for this bite-sized thing. 
and the fact that it sets up a story arc for a comedy show is rather interesting. Boulder Media may or may not have something, but we'll let the rest of the season be the judge of that. If you've already seen Princess Frives due to its international release, tell me down in the comments below how you felt. If you're watching it for the first time in the United States here, then please, as a first time viewer of Bony Life, how did you feel about it? Tell me down in the comment section below, and yes, there will be a playlist for this all throughout the season. It's great to be back doing weekly pony videos again, and I can't wait to give you my impressions on this different take in equestrian life. And you won't have to wait long for my review on the best of the worst, because it will be coming straight away, seeing that both episode 1 and 2 were aired together today. Until then, I'm Nirvana Sparkle. Find peace in your own Nirvana and find joy in this new pony life.